everyone. I hope you had a wonderful Easter weekend. It was so weird not seeing everyone around the church and I really missed getting to do our sunrise service, but thank you so much to everybody who participated in that and sent in videos for that. I think the video came out really well. It was wonderful hearing all of your testimonies. Uh, that's still up on our website if you wanted to go watch that and check it out. Today's message is called The Great Commission. So we know that while Jesus walked on earth, he was a rabbi, which even by worldly standards means that he had the authority to teach and interpret scripture. So he spent a lot of his time with his disciples, teaching them the scriptures and interpreting for them what it meant to them now that he was here walking the earth. And he also spent a lot of time talking about what was going to happen over Easter weekend about his death and his resurrection. He refers to himself a lot as the temple and says that, you know, this temple will fall and in three days it will be built again. And it seems like his disciples didn't really get what he was talking about a lot of the times that he was talking about that. But if you read through Matthew chapters five through seven, his Sermon on the Mount is just full of his interpretation of scripture and this new way of living into what it means to be a follower of God. And he does spend a lot of time teaching in parables and, and talking to crowds and just making sure that his disciples really understood the way that he would have them to live. So after Easter weekend on Resurrection Sunday, the first thing that Jesus does when he meets with his disciples is give them this great commission. So I'm gonna read you, this is from Matthew chapter 28 and it starts at verse 16 and goes through verse 20. This is the great commission. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you, always to the very end of the age. So he starts off by talking about where his authority comes from. We mentioned that, you know, as a rabbi on earth, he had that authority to teach and interpret scripture and everyone would have recognized that, but nobody truly knew the full authority that comes with being the son of God. He's literally God in flesh walking around and he wants the disciples to be very clear that Jesus has all authority on heaven and in, on earth. And then comes the therefore. So therefore, because he has this fullness of authority, he wants his disciples to take what they have learned and go out and make disciples of all nations. The teachings of Jesus are for everyone and he wants to make sure that everybody has access to them. So he's giving this great commission to the disciples, giving them this mission to go forth and to teach what he has been teaching them all along to everyone in the whole world. And of course, that same great commission is for us today. And a commission, I like that word commission, because when we use the word commission, sometimes we use it for art or like commissioning a piece or commissioning a building, an architect, something that's going to be created. And you would expect if you go to a particular artist and commission a portrait that they would follow their own artistic style, right? Like you wouldn't go to Picasso and ask him to paint the Sistine Chapel. He's gonna look different than, you know, a different artist is gonna look different from each other. So you go to someone for their individual way of, of creating. And the same is true for us. The same is true for disciples. We have all been created uniquely with individual personalities and different gifts and talents and different ways that we can go out and make disciples. So the way that I teach the word to others is gonna look very different than the way that somebody who's an athlete or a musician or a teacher or you know whatever other field you might be in than the way that they're going to make disciples. But there are some things that tie us all together. And we touched on this a few weeks ago, but I think one of those things are the fruits of the Spirit. You know, scripture tells us that against such things there is no law. There are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. These are all good things for all of us to practice no matter where we are, who our communities are, what it is we're doing, you know, what our vocation might be. Those are always good ways to be. And Jesus also mentions the two greatest commandments, loving God and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Those are also things that are always good to practice no matter where you are. There's also the golden rule to treat others the way that you would want to be treated. 
So even though God created us all uniquely with these individual personalities and, and gifts and desires of our hearts and things like that, and we want to live into that, there are some things that do tie us together, like those fruits of the Spirit, like kindness is never going out of style. I don't care who you are. It's always a good idea to be kind, and it's always good to be patient and loving and to be filled with faith and to be humble and to be you know, giving to others to be generous. Those are always good things. And it's always important to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And the good golden rule of thumb, treating other people the way that we would want to be treated is also always something that we can do. So this great commission that's for all of us looks different no matter who we are. But those are just three ways that we can begin to live into that wherever we might be. So as we continue through this week after Easter, and in the weeks to come where we're remaining socially distanced and a little bit more isolated than we're used to be in our communities, we might need to take extra care to practice these fruits of the Spirit and to be loving to our neighbors to make sure that we are living into our Great Commission. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.